Love it. That's pretty good. It's a pretty loud I, it's diesel. It's a pretty damn loud diesel. <laughs> I dig it. <laughs> All right, let's go for a ride. All right, this Wrangler right behind me. It's a little special because it's a diesel. First of its kind. Let's uh, go check it out here. Obviously it looks the same, but it's gonna sound much different. Let me start this thing up. Leave the door open so we can hear it. Push button start. Oh, that's so weird. Diesel and the Wrangler. I don't know if you can hear that. Let's go outside. Yeah, that's a diesel. It's a good idle. It's not too, it's not too loud. Oh, look who's here. What's going on, guys? Hey, hey man, what's up? What's up? We got a diesel. It's definitely a diesel. It's a Wrangler with I'm a diesel. Psyched man. about the diesel. Oh man, I, I like how this sounds. Yeah. This sounds amazing. It sounds like a diesel. There are a lot of diesels that are super refined these days, but this, there's yeah. no mistaking it. Are we going to confirm that it's actually a diesel? Oh, yeah. So, please tell me that's not Echo Diesel. It's called Eco Diesel, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, Ford's the only one that spells Echo, E C O. So, Greg, you drove this over the weekend, right? Yeah, I was psyched. That's why I had to run down here and talk about it. I thought it was so much fun. The acceleration's really good. A lot of low-end torque. I like how it sounds. I, to me, it's like other cars don't sound like this. You pull up to something and you kind of get some looks like, like, dude, your Wrangler sounds weird. What's up with that? <laughs> so, I really liked it. It also kind of really opened my eyes to the Wrangler because like the yeah. turbo four-cylinder is really good. And the V6 is something, the Pentastar V6. We've all been driving that for so long in so many different cars. This gives this a different flavor, you know? It's quick. Really? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. No, it, it's really fast. It's, uh, I, I actually think it's like my ideal engine for the Wrangler, like that low end torque. Yeah. This, this kind of a vehicle, it just feels like it's perfectly suited to it. Wranglers are known for like horrific fuel economy. Yeah, like, yeah. They're normally like 20, yeah, I mean, 20 or best. It's a I, box. I managed to eke out 27 miles per gallon on my way into the office one day with this thing. It's like, that blew my mind. Wait, it, wait, wait. It, wait. In a 27? I said 27 miles per gallon, yeah. That's what the trip computer said. Uh, not an exact math, you know, when you actually fill it up at the pump, but. Right. I was easily getting 25. And I easily. drove this all around town, on the roads, on the expressway took it to a Christmas tree lighting. It was just, to me, I was surprised how much the Eco Diesel makes the Wrangler. It's just this like, I hate to say this, like commuter SUV. Yeah. It's still like rough and tumble, all that good stuff, but yeah. you're like, I'm getting good fuel economy, you know? So that's a really good thing. Let's go check it out inside. Oh, hey, John. Hi. Oh, yeah. I will say this, as nice as this thing is, any guesses on the price? Uh, I'm not even gonna try. I'm gonna guess. Is it above 60? <laughs> nope. No. Nope. Okay. All right. Good. It doesn't have seat heaters or. Uh, heat All right. Steering wheels. How about? That blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. about 48? Higher. Uh, higher. Okay. That's Jeez. Fine. Man. How about? All right. I'm gonna do one more. I'll do just 53. 57. Okay. Oh my yep. God. Yep. 57. <laughs> this is what like prevents me from thinking like how I'd want a Wrangler though. Is like. You pay a little bit of the premium for the diesel, and then to make it like this nice, which makes a Wrangler basically livable, you gotta pay fifty-seven thousand dollars. I mean, fifty-seven thousand dollars. Okay, I gotta leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Snyder's out. He's gone. No longer interested. He's eco diesel green car is gone. Yeah, actually, that's probably my cue to get out too, because you guys are gonna go around and. That's we it. are. We yeah, are we're gonna, gonna drive around. Yeah. Yeah. I will say this: fun. on the way in, rolled this all the way back. It's oh, 43 degrees, which is fine. That worked out pretty good. I left it in two-wheel drive because look at it, we're all good. 
Um, yeah. Have fun, guys. All right, we man. Will. Thank you for stopping by. Of course. See you. So this is the Sahara, and like, what does that mean when it comes to like the, the trim levels? In so G you have the Wrangler Sport, the Sport S, a Sahara, and a Rubicon. Right. Okay. Uh, the Sport and the Sport S are going to be the cheaper ones. Yeah. That doesn't mean they're cheap. They're still. Yeah, they're off road capable. You can get options right, on them. Right. Right. And they're up in the 40s. So most people uh, do. They buy the cheaper ones and they just mod them out. Yeah. Yeah. No. Those are those are definitely the ones that you get if you just. You're gonna do some cool off-roading, etc. Mm -hmm. And the Rubicon is the one if you're gonna do some serious rock crawling. Uh, that's, I mean, this yeah. th th this car is still super capable, but it's still no Rubicon. Named after the Rubicon Trail. Yes, yes, it was. All right, let's go for a ride. Why not? Did you drive this? I drove in? this last week, actually. Oh, last week. Uh, okay. Yeah, I drove it. It's, it's almost been a week since I drove it. Now. Really? Yeah. Now this is the first time Jeep has put a diesel in a Wrangler, right? This is the first time, yes. It is, uh, it's, it's a bit of a big deal, actually. Yeah. Do you know uh, if they'll put this in their uh, Gladiator? Oh, if they're smart, they will. I bet that it'll have even more towing. Quick. Wow. Surprisingly quick. Torquey. In a big Wrangler, yeah. yeah. No, it, uh, it looks like it redlines about 4,500 RPM, but as soon as the, the turbo kicks in and gives you that big chunk of torque there down low, the thing mm -hmm. rockets forward. Way faster than uh, a big old Wrangler you'd expect would. Have you ever owned a Jeep? I've never owned a Jeep. I've never been a Jeep person, if I'm gonna be completely honest. Okay. Uh, track use has been my my main thing with with my personal car. Uh, it doesn't mean I don't love off-roading though. I've I've taken two Wranglers now on like pretty serious off-road trails, and uh, it's a hell of a lot of fun. I like it. <laughs> so earlier in this year, McGraw, uh, Alex Kirstein, and myself, we took the newly released Gladiator from Sacramento. They had a drive out in Sacramento, and uh, we were fortunate enough to let, have them let us take it from Sacramento and drive it all the way to Moab in Utah. Yeah. That was like a 15 hour trip, but well worth it because when we got there, we were able to go off-roading in the Gladiator. So if they put have this engine in the Gladiator, I feel like that would work out really, really I well. Think that would be a smart move actually, because it's the truck. Like everybody wants a diesel in their truck, you know? Yep. And they, you know, they already have the Eco Diesel in the Ram 1500 that just launched. Yeah, that's uh, that's real nice. That thing is sweet. I think it maxes out about 32 mpg highway. Uh, that's awesome. The that's fact, really the fact really that you good. You can get that good of fuel economy yeah. uh, with these huge vehicles is kind of shocking. Uh, you just have to deal with the diesel price at the pump, which when I filled up it was about three dollars here in Michigan. Yeah. Which regular at, at about that time was about two thirty ish. So. You do pay a little bit more, but uh, the fuel economy gains are huge. Mm -hmm. You'd have to do some math there to figure out if it's actually worth it or not. Do you think people are afraid of diesels because of like either the smell or the sound of the engine, or do you think it's something else? I think, I mean, so diesels for the longest time have been a European thing. Yeah. Like everybody over there owns a diesel because petrol is so darn expensive and diesels always got better fuel economy. You could buy a Golf with a little 1.2 liter diesel and you'd get 50 miles per gallon versus, you know, if you buy a 1.6 uh, petrol engine, uh, you're getting like 35 to 40 miles per gallon. Right. Uh, and you know, fuel was just so much more expensive over there. So boom, that's what they bought and that's what everybody adopted. And fuel has never really been that expensive here. So they haven't necessarily caught on in smaller cars. You know, they, they've been the thing to get if you want maximum towing in a truck. And I, I think, you know, in that respect, you know, you look at, uh, the heavy-duty truck market, diesels are everywhere. People love the diesels there, they've 100% caught on, but people don't like the unrefined sound, they don't like, you know, the, the characteristics of the engine, you know, it, it's super low revving. Uh, when they could buy a, a gasoline engine car that is better and that they're used to, and that's just what everybody wants, in a, in a quiet, refined passenger car these days. Yeah. And I, and on top of that, like every single car that a manufacturer puts a diesel in is like unreasonably expensive. They always have some massive markup on it. Like this thing, it's four thousand dollars more to get the Eco Diesel 
than it is if you were to get uh, just the regular 3.6 liter V6. And you know, how many years would you actually have to drive it to recoup that $4,000 in True. gas mileage? You know, if that was all you were in it for, then it, it might not be worth it. If you're in it because you really like the way that the diesel feels, you like the driving characteristics of it, then sure, why not? Spend the money and buy it because this thing is actually a lot of fun to drive. Wow, that put me in my seat. Surprisingly quick. Yeah. It's fun. That I felt the the forces of that. You know, you you typically are not like, oh, this Wrangler is so much fun to drive on road, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> normally you got to get off the pavement before you're like, oh, I'm having a good time. Right. Yeah. But, uh, this is the first on road Wrangler I, uh, that has some decent acceleration. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll admit, you know, a, a Wrangler with with a 2.0 turbo, that that thing feels quick now. But yeah. This this feels faster. Just, just from a seat of the pants acceleration. You know, once you get up, you know, out of the, the diesel's, you know, range of like where it's happy at, you know, between like zero, 50, 60 miles per hour, it starts to run out of steam a bit. Uh, but that's just characteristic of pretty much any diesel yeah, out there. Yeah, they're, you know, they're more for the torque on that. You're not gonna have huge passing power at 80 miles per hour. Pretty sure that this has 240 horsepower and uh, 420 pound feet of torque. Oh, that's enough. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's plenty. That's a ton of torque. That's why it feels so quick when you're just scooting around town, which is what most people do if they're actually going to use their Wrangler to commute in. Yep. Which, you know, if you uh, if you live around Michigan, you see them all the time. And there's one right there. Yeah, we just have one past There's the Rubicon. <laughs> nice, yeah. nice cherry red Rubicon. Good interior. Feels like you could take the doors off and not have to worry about the rain. Yeah, yeah. man, that's that's the the Sahara that you get there. You yep. get a nice quality looking interior. We got a soft top. This is so this is the one touch sky view top. It's a one four, touch. It's a four thousand dollar option. You, oh, it's automatic. It's, it's automatic. So you, you press this button here, and there's a, a the actual roof here is a soft top, and it folds all the way back and then sort of rests up atop uh, the roof. Well, we gotta do that later. Yeah, we're absolutely gonna do that. You know, let's it, go park it. It might be 47, eh, 47, it's nice out, let's do it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why aren't we driving around with it like that right now? <laughs> let's do it. It's about freezing, it's it's convertible season. Yeah, it is. That's how it goes in Michigan. Just take advantage of the warm weather as much as possible yep. because in about a week, it'll be about 20 degrees out with uh, about a foot of snow. Yeah, I mean, we, we already had that this year. Yeah, we did. That came in out of nowhere. It really did. And now it's 47 and I can feel my winter tires just melting on the on the pavement. <laughs> I, I just put the winters back on uh, my Acura Integra for this weekend, actually. Really? Yep. You, know, you got the Blizzax on that? Uh, actually, no, I have Michelin X Ices. Oh, those they, are good. They stopped making Blizzax for, for my wheel size. Really? So, yeah, no, so I, I had Blizzax for the first like three or four years that I owned the car, and then they went, uh, they went goodbye. <laughs> like, well, I have no Blizzax. No more Bridgestone Blizzax. <laughs> You're not special enough anymore. I guess not. Bridgestone, That's what happens when you drive a 2000 car. That is what, yeah. I mean, honestly, but then again, most like, of it is the 90s. That yeah. <laughs> they stopped making it in 2001. I have the last model here. That That's thing. right. Let's go park this and take the top off. Let's do it. Hey, what's this, Palmer? Looks like a Porsche Panamera. Should get excited. Oh, is that ours? Yeah, I think it is ours. It definitely can't be anybody else's. It's definitely ours. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got going on? I think we're gonna put the roof back. Yeah, take it back. It's warm enough. Do you have to hold on to it or is it just one touch? Oh, there we go. Just one touch. That's more like it. Nice. I like this. This is more expensive than any panoramic sunroof will ever be. <laughs> Just see right through here. Let's go for a ride. <laughs>